Thanks, Andy. So, after seeing the finale of the women's and Tintin Ho taking a sixth national championship from Jasmine Wong's effort in the final, we now have the final of the men's singles and the holder at the far end, Tom Jarvis in the black and in the dark blue at this end, Paul Drinkle. Tom's won it twice. Paul's won it six times, but the last two years were the, one, were the times that Tom won it. So, can the more experienced Paul Drinkle make a comeback and take yet another national title and take it away from the current Whoa. holder, Tom Jarvis? Beautiful backhand. We've got Don Parker here again. That's a nice start for Tom, hey, with that uh, backhand down the line. Really so powerful. So important, isn't it, to go down the line. If, if you, you've played too much on the diagonals, your opponent can predict One, where the ball's going. Paul did a little bit of a gamble there. He thought the serve was coming long. Just watch him. He runs round. So Tom needs to go down the line. He needs to serve down the line occasionally as well. Right. Yeah. Cool. Which he does there. Which he did there. But I think this is going to be a really good game. I, it's difficult to predict the winner. But as you said, Colin, Paul's won it six times already. That Who's sort three? of makes him sound the favourite. But Tom's won it the last two years, two years back to back. That sort of makes him sound pretty useful as well. So who's going to win it? I don't know. I suspect it's the one who, who's fairly brave, goes down the line a little bit, tries to quaint their opponent down. Tactics so important in this final. Yeah, so all square right now. Just a reminder that Tom's serving there. Beat Chris Doran this morning in the semi-final. Four games to one. Chris Doran played unbelievably well and took the first game, actually, from Tom. Really had Tom worried with his variety. But in the end, Tom started to get a few of those on towards the end of the match. And he was too strong for, for, for Chris. But what a beautiful rally there. I, I think if... Paul backs away from the table. Tom's just got that little bit more power than anybody else in the tournament. And I think that, that's not a good tactic for Paul. And indeed, there, he's trying to stay up. He's trying to get in with strong top spins himself. If he backs away, Tom Jarvis now very consistent on both wings, very powerful on both wings. Moving up the world ranking list. Three, six. On an upward trajectory. Yeah, Tom's certainly getting stronger. He's been a bit frustrated this season. He says he's lost about, you know, five or six really, really Seven, close three. games against world-class opposition. But he's had a couple of really good wins, two wins in the top 50 in the world. So he might be able to get his ranking up in the uh, on the world stage. Both players, of course, on the world TT circuit. Liam Pitchford not able to play in this competition because he's mandated Eight, to play three. by the International Table Tennis Federation in the... World TT Championships that's uh, currently taking place in Seoul, South Korea. Left. Eight, three. And from Paul's point of view, this morning in the semi-final, he put out in a fantastic match, Sam Walker. Three, nine. Again, it's Tom who gets in with that first strong topspin. Here he comes. On that occasion, he went out wide on the diagonal. They see him go down the line with the next one. Oh, nine. Yeah, Paul got a bit lucky then, and the following ball, he was able to place wherever he wanted it. After Tom getting away a few minutes ago, two serves for the set. Go. Nine, six. No, it doesn't make it, so Paul will get to serve again. Slow ball there. Yeah. Me. Just and, and Tom let it drop then, and when it drops, yeah. it's very difficult to get pace on the because ball. Because it's it? got nothing coming at you. Exactly. 
And you've got to lift it over the net as well if you take it low. Seven, nine. Mm. So Paul Drinkle maybe taking a, a leaf out of Chris Doran's book. Maybe you saw what Chris was doing, just getting Tom with a bit of variation just to take away his powerful four and back Score. in loops. Seven, ten. Backhand flick from Paul Drinkle, caught the top of the net, and the net flicking it off the side of the table. Three game points. Nice backhand down the line from Paul, and then across to the other side, pulls him back to 10-8. That's a beautiful set him up, and then into the backhand, and then wide of the backhand. Beautiful play from Paul. Very experienced international player. So Tom Jarvis 10-8 up, and two serves to come. 10-8. Uh, Lovely flick. Serve had a little bit of topspin. I thought when he flicks it, he overdone it. The ball popped up a bit. He caught the end of the table okay. Tom had decided to run around and play his backhand from the... Sorry, this forehand from the backhand side, but it wasn't there. Pulls in with a top spin, not too powerful. Oh. Again, beautiful backhand down the line. Both players at it, and it's back to juice. Paul will be absolutely delighted with that. Caught Tom wide of the forehand twice. Very brave play by the experienced Paul Drinkle. Oh. Well, well, well. They call him the warrior for a reason, Don. Well done, Paul Drinkle. 9-4 down. 11-10 up. Yeah. The flick again. Yeah. And he yeah. takes the first game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Tom will be really gutted to let that one slip. Second game, Jarvis to serve. Love all. Second game. Love one. Lucky one for Paul. If Paul can win, and it's a big if, of course, well, not a big if, but it's an if, mm. he would then have seven times champion. He just moves him away from him. Dennis Neal. It'd be, it'd be the second highest ever after Desmond Douglas. Yeah, Dennis Neal was on six at the moment. Yep. Alan Cook's on six. Yep. Um, and Paul Drinkle's on six, and Liam Pitchford, and I think, is on six. On six. Yeah. Paul, with seven, as you say, would put him at still one. four, I think, behind the great Desmond Douglas, yeah. who's got 11 men's singles titles. But, this, but the second best record ever. Let's see. So Tom's got himself a little yellow card there. Two sure. blocking under pressure and he gradually turned the power around and got his own big shots in by the end of the rally. Three. Took that so early, Paul Brinkland. I blinked and I think I missed the point of contact. There. Lovely. Straight into the body. Oh, unbelievable. Wide flick, and look at that block. He's left Tom standing quite a few times already in this match. So the last couple of years, Tom's looked so predatory against, you know, players of the like of Liam and Paul and Sam, David Macbeth. Uh, but he looks a little bit vulnerable here because Paul's on the warpath. He really wants this. Max Stevens in the background watching, Five. studying. 5-2. Max, a top England senior player now. A lot of players watching this, seeing what they can glean for their own games. That's a nice flip Three, from Tom. Off balance, but made it. Oh, 
Four five. A little bit of side spin on the top spin there from Tom. There he goes. Out wide to Paul's forehand. Beautiful top spins. Six four. Forehand from everywhere. Great movement from Paul. Camera can't keep up. Not surprised. Seven, four. Paul's looking physically strong, mentally strong, tactically strong. He just looks keen as mustard for this, doesn't he? You know, 34 year old man. Been around for 20 years on the senior circuit. Four, eight. It's just like up for everything. Wonderful to see. Great to see that enthusiasm. Such a youthful spirit, hasn't he? We could still see a few twists and turns. Oh, it's not over, Don. No, Certainly I'm not, not over, predicting that it's I over. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Paul, though. Exactly. You know, and I hope Five, I hope eight. Tom can you know, raise his game to match him. That's a strong ball. If you don't keep the ball within what a centimeter over the net, then you're in trouble on the return of Left. serve. Five eight. Good flick eight, return, eight. but Tom managed to squeeze around and get squeeze the ball out of his body. Placed it well, placed, placed it into the body of yeah, Paul. Yeah, Paul did well, didn't he? And Paul we got a little bit cramped up. Yo! Another eight, great six. flick. Two points away from going two games to love up. That was a nice backhand flick. Even Tom, you could see, admiring the shot. Six ten. A spinnier forehand topspin from Paul Drinkle. Mm. Just took the pace off the ball, came up the back of the ball. Yeah, so he's still doing the variation as well. Which we know needs to happen against someone Seven, like Tom. Ten. Can't let Tom get into a rhythm. He's more powerful even. And Paul is at times. Three game points to save. Ten, Ooh. eight. Just off balance there, Paul decided to spin the ball high. Off the end. But still two game points for a two love lead. Paul Drinkle, one game up, 10 8 up, serving. <laughs> and he got it. Tom's in a little bit of trouble. I think Tom will be thinking now again, he won't be able to help thinking that he should have had the first game. So Paul serving, Next. start of the third game. Got himself off to a great start. Let's see what happens now. Love on. And a quick shout out about the, who they beat in the quarterfinals. So in the quarters, Paul beat Ralph Patterson uh, from Essex 4-1. So well done, Ralph, for picking up a game. He won the second game 11-8. Well done, Ralph. Not an easy feat to do. And then in the, uh, the other quarterfinal, Tom Jarvis beat Larry Trampauskas. And again, Larry took a game. And uh, it's good to see that... Um, that Larry took a game there. He took the fourth game off Tom. Larry, of course, in the final of the men's doubles earlier. So, well done, lads. Bodes well for the future. People coming up and pushing these top players. It's also worth, worth noting that Paul beat Toby Ellis 
who's a similar age youngster coming through in the quarterfinal. One, three. So it's good to see the younger players getting to the latter stages of the tournament. And probably the, the best match of the tournament, although this one's not finished, was the Connor Green um, quarterfinal. Uh, yes, quarterfinal, wasn't it, as well? Yeah. So I think we had four of our under-19 players in the quarterfinal. Well, we did. Actually, the last 16, that was. So quarterfinals, yeah. So Tom beat Joseph Hunter, who we saw in the final of the men's. Yeah, you're right. And Toby Ellis in the quarters for, for Paul after, after Ralph. Thanks for that. So that's encouraging, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the performance team at English Table Tennis is working hard to bring the players through and support them. It's not easy. Table tennis is a sport that's played in many, many countries. The European Championships attracts over 50 countries. The World Championships can attract over 100 countries, Country. sending teams. Very popular sport around the world. Five, two. And therefore, very competitive for the players. Incredibly, incredibly. Tom training in Sweden. Two, six. I think the last time he's been over for a few days, apart from that, he's been in Sweden the whole time since about December. Paul mixed his time now. He's at home with his family, young family in Surrey. Um, but he says he's been really busy going around on the World Table Tennis circuit. It's pretty demanding on travel. So you've got to get around to the tournaments. No! Seven, three. Paul said before the championships, he says, there's a few things I want to prove didn't say what they were, but he's clear that he's, there's more that he wants to do in the sport, and that's great. Supported by Nine, wife Jo, eight, England International herself. Paul, just a couple of little errors. Four, there's the eight. famous flip. What Gavin Evans called it's one of his super strengths, forehand flip cross court. Opens the angle to make it look like he's going to touch it short, and at the last minute, bang. Terrific. Well, a little look across to his dad. He said, Yeah, I'm there now, says Tom. 9 4 up. Can he take this game? Put himself properly back into it. Coming across to the forehand mm -hmm. side often, Tom, to return with his backhand. Oh. He is. And yet not out of position to play the one that does come along to the backhand. I think he anticipated that one well, didn't yeah. he? The previous two or three serves have been short to his forehand. He come round with the backhand to play from the forehand side. And then he just sat and waited. Ten, five. Okay. Tom serving for the game. Just overhit that one. It's so hard when you step in and go down the line because your body weight carries the ball off the end of the table if you're not careful. Drop to you. Yeah, good comeback there from Paul. Big fist pump, even though he's got three more game points against him. So Tom Jarvis takes game three, puts himself back into it. An open topspin to topspin rally. Mm. Paul's just lost his focus there a little bit. I just said at the end of the last game, just looked a little bit tight. And the first rally seemed to still have that. So just saying, he's, you, know, you need the relaxed power from Drinkle. Very, very hard to stay in the zone. I don't know, Don, if you've had that feeling. You've been in the zone and then you kind of drop out of it. It's very, very hard to know what to do at that point because you don't know what you can do, what you can't do. It's a critical moment mentally to be able to recover once you've come out of 
the white zone of perfect mental application. So Tom Jarvis looking a bit stronger relatively now. Fast serve. I'm talking about how's go who's going to start the rallies faster. Paul not quite getting out of his crossover. Ball peppered into his right hip at the moment. Tom not one can give him time to get his body out of the way of the ball to be able to turn and put his levers to it. Paul's just fighting to get back. Again, coming across to play that backhand flick from the forehand side of the table. Just gets a little bit more wrist action into the shot when you play your backhand from the forehand side. Lovely forehand, first attack, forehand loop from Tom. Ball drifted slightly long, bang. Great stuff. So, Tom's back in it. Oh, the, the speed getting around. Recovery for the next shot, amazing. Uh, and the shot that won it there, we'll see here. He just does a slower, there it goes, that's the slower one. Mm. Changed the pace on the ball. Tom then overhitting, but Tom still with the one-point lead. Yeah, good spot, Don, and lovely on the slow-mo to be able to see that again. Tom knows what he wants to do. Let's get Paul away from the table. Great recovery shots from Paul. Beautiful. Tom choosing to topspin rather than smash. In the end, he got there. You see Paul was running in in anticipation. Tom mainly keeping Paul away by playing into the backhand. The occasional one went to the forehand. That's to stop Paul running round. His backhand from the forehand side. Sorry, his forehand from the backhand side is probably one of his mm -hmm. best shots. Yeah. That was an absolute rocket from Tom Jarvis. Yeah, and Paul tapping the table actually as he dried his hand to acknowledge that shot. Keeping it short. Paul was in. That's an unforced error at that level for him. Nine out of ten that would go on. It was going into the body as well. I think it was a winner. Just caught the top of the net. It was a millimetre from being a winner. So with the momentum turn, you can just see that Paul's having to kind of fight himself a little bit to work out you know, what kind of approach to take tactically. Wonderful flick again. Receiving the short ball, making it look like you're going to drop it short and then attack it quickly. Paul gets this one. Oh, and what a recovery right shot nine. from Tom. He was under so much pressure, but his backhand was fantastic. And the key here is how early he takes it. Almost off the bounce, straight down the line. And that's a four-point lead. Paul came back from 9-4 down in the first game. Six, nine. Can he come back from 9-5 down in the fourth game? And it's a little bit of a battle, isn't it, of who's pushing who away from the table. More recently, Tom's got Paul away from the table. Ten, six. Previous couple of games, Paul was pushing Tom away.
Four game points for Tom to square the match. Two, two games all, first to four. Um, is that enough? No, he's over hit it. Got the ball up, but couldn't put it away. He knew he rushed that one. Took it too early, I think, Don. Again, clever play from Paul. Threw it up, no pace on the ball. Yeah. Tom just a little bit too early with his shot. I can't believe that flick. It's just, that was almost lazy. Beautiful flick. World class. So, towel down, 10 8. Every six points they can towel down. Let's take a moment to regroup. So, Paul needs these two. And with his two serves. The flick again. Tom did well to get the first loop back well. Paul really working hard to keep close to the table now. Even with a slightly compromised shot, it was enough. Intellectually very demanding on Paul this, because with the, like you say, in the open fast rallies, Tom's got just a little bit more, we think. He's back at 10 all. He just won't be beaten. 9-5 for Tom, and now it's two clear points. Alternate serving, and Tom to go first. Well, that's yeah. a, oh, he's missed the flick. Yeah. Yeah. It popped up, certainly Number popped 10. up. Unusual shot to have to play, Don. You don't quite expect it, so it's kind of understandable, but Tom would expect to put that away most of the time well twists and turns again a new momentum coming across Tom was brave there came right across touched it very very short and took the opportunity of the flick away because it was such a high quality return of serve brave and brilliantly executed by Tom at game point down puts him back in it Two great fighters. Uh, what a wonderful backhand down the line from Tom held his ground, forced Paul away from the table. As you said before, Colin, it's who can push who away from the table. The person doing the pushing tends to win the point. So, another little twist and turn. Yeah, in this match, certainly, I think the key is to be closer to the table than your opponents. Not always the case. Bravo. That's a great recovery shot from Paul. Game point down. Pull Tom across to the middle. And then wide of the back end. Acknowledgement from Tom. They really respect each other. Suspect a short serve. Will he be brave and go for the long, fast serve? And this rally's got everything. Such high quality by the net to begin with. Surely it's Tom's. Yes, he gets it. The whole drink will cover in some ground, scrambling across the table. But it's game point for Tom Jarvis. I can't believe that he's that far away from the table. Tom can put it anywhere and still <laughs> Paul's running around to get his forehand in. 12-13. Wonderful. Game point Jarvis to square it again. Great short return. Yeah! So Tom got a bit it's lucky, but the quality of the receiver served on at Juice, that's what yeah. carried Tom through that ultimately. For all of the big shots, is that brilliant, brilliant return of service two times. Well done, Tom Jarvis. Thanks to all the officials, all the organisers, coordinators, administrators Love that on. have put this together.
with players jogging still in between points. They're so tight around the net. They're not the points that end up on YouTube, but they are the points that win championships quite often. There's your fast serve done. And he followed in with the backhand down the line, just over hit it, Tom. Second serve in this sequence coming up. Oh, again, it's popped up. Tom surprised when he gets the easier ball. You don't expect to get that, that ball from, from Paul. It was easier, but of course, by then, Tom's legs were un under the table, predicting a lower return. Just just missed it and overhits it. Two, three. Mm. Cat and mouse around the net, isn't it? Two. Just a little, little error there from Paul. Bit of a towel down. Almost a kind of a little mini timeout there for Paul. I wondered whether he was thinking of taking a timeout and realised it was a towel break anyway, make the most of it. Four two. Yeah, umpire asking them to get on with it. Asking Paul, really. Good by Paul, just to settle himself. And then he's in again. Again, you were talking earlier about the doubles being around the net when Paul was playing in the uh, in the final of the doubles. Important there for him in the singles as well. That skill, absolutely vital in top class table tennis. Four all. Just feels like Tom's nearly there and nearly getting away and Paul's just hanging on to him and holding him back. Well, it's two games each and four points each. It couldn't be closer at this point in time. Four, five. Paul's movement comes from great power. And I think comparatively, if I'm looking for a difference, Tom's just got slightly quicker twitch. Explosive twitch. And it helps his top spins and his, his power balls. Five, six. Big cry out from Paul Drinkle. He's winning the... They sometimes call him the cheat points. The shorter rallies, the little tiny errors. Left. Five, six. Is Paul getting himself back into the zone? Whoa, maybe he was. But Tom did that anyway. Again, the backhand down the line. That's just superb, isn't it? Paul took a gamble there. He stayed round the backhand side, hoping the ball would come on that diagonal. It didn't. Tom, very intelligent. Table tennis whipped the backhand straight down the line. And then Paul flailing. Kick it out to the wide forehand. Six or two or no! seven, six. Again, he's coming round playing that backhand. Mm -hmm. Here we see. Just watch how he comes round there, playing the backhand from way over on the forehand side. Technique used by a lot of the top players now. Mm -hmm. Almost unheard of 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> yes, eh! Six, eight. In fact, you'd probably get told off for doing it 20, 30 years ago. If you'd have done it when you were a junior on the training camps, you would definitely have been told off for doing that. And <laughs> it just shows you how much your coach knew at the time, and that was me. <laughs> yep. 
Okay, so nice. the game evolves, that's for sure. No, I love those ca training camps, England training camps, fantastic times. Oh, unlucky, seven. just off the end. I have to say, it was that backhand down the line from Tom that won the point, but Paul still with that two-point lead, 9-7. He's back with that confident look again, that swagger. Feels to me that Paul's dangerous again. Extra dangerous. Ten, see, that was a great return from Tom. And see what Paul did with it. When Paul sees it coming, he can stay as close as Tom does. Beautiful. Yeah, big fist. He actually uses the side spin yeah. on the ball to yeah. create the angle out wide yeah. to the forehand. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Tom knew he had to really gun it from away from the table and he got stuck there. But Paul Drinkle, what a start. Oh, nice flick and a counter loop. That's an absolute classic rally. Well played, both men. Popped up. Love two. Has been known to miss one or two of those this final. Yeah, Tom, Tom missed two of those at least. Yeah, and he, uh, did, he didn't. Then he took his time. It was more confident, wasn't it? Yeah, top of the bounce, no mistake. Back. Love three. So Tom, two on his serve, one against. Good start. Love yeah, for me, this is all about the, z the zone. Who can get in the zone and stay there and not get pushed out of it by the other person's variation. Oh. Great return of serve from Tom Jarvis. Very relaxed on the back and good use of the elbow, and particularly the wrist. And now Tom, the one looking calm and fast. Four, one. Mm. Paul standing up against the serve, pushing Tom away from the table. Two, four. It's interesting, isn't it, when you look at the game now compared to, say, 20 years ago, there's shots where your opponent plays a big top spin and you blocked the ball back. Mm -hmm. You just got your bat in on the right the angle and guided it back. Yeah. But now people that don't block it, they actually use the elbow and the wrist and they attack it back. They drive through it. They counter top spin it back. That's right. The block is slowly but surely at this level just it. disappearing right. from the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might do a variation, but then you like to do something with its side spin, chop block, or yeah. But just to put your bat in the way of it's not enough. Unfortunately for me, because I was quite good at that. <laughs> the world ran me over eventually. <laughs> Look at that beautiful backhand loop down the line. The ball just shot off the table. Great power. So a good start for Tom. He's looking calm and fast, as I said. If we can hold the mentality, keep Paul slightly mentally off balance. That could well go to a final game. Even though Paul's this good at flicking, I don't think I've seen him flick this much, this hard and this well. Let's Really Six exceptional, three. and still, Paul, um, still Tom is is happy that he does it and countering against it. Terrific play, but there again, Tom's got a decent practice partner out in Sweden. Trains with Charles Morgard quite often. Four six. 
through Murgard has just won the Swedish, Swedish Open today. Oh, today beat was it? Today. Yeah. He beat Anton Kalberg in the final. Mm -hmm. yeah. This tends to be a weekend on the calendar where a lot of the countries have their national championships. Five, six. Big shout from Paul. I feel like Paul's just hanging in, though. At the moment. Ah, time out. So who's taken that one? Paul? No, I, I'm I guess, I'm guessing. I, it, and they put it at Tom's side. Yeah. Yeah, so Tom called it. I think yeah. he had he was a few points in the lead, wasn't he? Six two. And I think Paul's won three consecutive points. A little bit of momentum being generated by Paul. And so, whoa, let's just take a pause. Let's have a minute, check in with Dad, and hopefully break the momentum that uh, Paul yeah. was building up. Both players, there, they're walking differently now. Both of them looking like caged tigers walking up and down a couple of paces. Tom especially. Paul's decided that's enough. He's going to get called back to the table. Can Tom stay strong? Is Paul back in the zone? Or can he retain the zone? That, uh, Tom's tried to interrupt with his timeout. Both players looking like they're wanting Five, to six. show confidence, mental dominance over the other. No quarter given or expected. Six all. Beautiful. Just stay that relaxed and play that power. Both players. Wonderful. All square. But Paul, 3-2 up. Only needs this game. 7-6. So the flick misses that time. Paul there saying, get out wide of Tom's forehand occasionally. Long push from Tom and round to get his loop in. Six, That's eight. off. Now we'll play Tom. So good use of the long, fast push. Yeah, six all. That was quite a pivotal moment for Tom. Paul had won four consecutive points. Mm -hmm. Tom's just held his nerve well, taking two points on the run now. But you can never Seven, write eight. Paul Drinkle <laughs> off, that's for sure. He'll come back to bite you. It's all he needs, just a little couple of centimetres. Too high, too long. In he goes. A well-placed topspin there from Paul Drinkle into the body of Tom Jarvis. Have a look. Not sure he played a backhand from underneath his L, underneath his shoulder. Mm. Eight all. Paul Drinkle three points away from championship. What a flick again. Yeah, that previous one. Paul saw that forehand loop early. Got into position quickly. Really fighting hard to keep up with Tom's speed. If he can match him for speed, he's got a good chance, but very, very hard to because Tom's such a quick mover. Control ball follows up. Just missed it. Two championship points to Paul Drinkle. He's been so tough mentally. Six all, he went eight six down, and now he's taken another four points on the run as Paul Drinkle to give himself, as you say, Colin, two championship points for his seventh title. Well, after a fantastic championships, doubles, paras, under 21s, yeah! Eleven, eight. it's Eleven, over, eight and it's Paul Drinkle is the champion in the 2024 seven times winner.
Well played, Paul Drinkle. Fantastic. Unlucky Tom. Tom Jarvis. And there it is. What a warrior. What a champion. Well, Tom, commiserations. It wasn't to be. Your three-year reign is at an end. So what made the difference today, do you think? Uh, Paul's good, isn't he? He's, I don't know how he's so fast. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, it's been a tough tournament. It's been a good tournament. Um, I'm happy I uh, made it a bit entertaining for the crowd. I was, I was thinking at one point it's going to be 4-0, but no, um, I tried to dig in and uh, got back to 2-all, but um, Paul changed some things uh, from the fifth set, and uh, yeah, he was really strong in the end. So uh, let's bring Paul in as well, actually. Yeah, you, there was a lot of chewing going on there. You are officially now second only to Desmond Douglas in the all-time list, so how does that feel? Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, good. Um, it's just brilliant to keep playing and keep being in these matches, and yeah, hopefully there's many more matches and titles to go with it. What were the key moments, do you think? I think the first set was quite important. Um, yeah, I think throughout the whole ma match, it was his it, on his way, my way, and yeah, and some days it goes your way, and today it was my day. Uh, Tom, you were in great form last year. Were you not quite at the same level, just trying to search for it a little bit this year? Yeah, it's always always a battle at, at nationals. You've got all them young kids trying to trying to beat you, and you have to fend them off, and then. After all them young kids, you've got this old man here who uh, just won't leave. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it's his last one. And uh, <laughs> I'm sick of him already. Surely everyone is. Seven's too much, isn't it? So, Paul, are you officially retiring? No, you're, you're going to come back and defend it, aren't you? Ignore this man. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we wish you all the best, whatever the future holds for you both. Tom Jarvis and our champion, Paul Drinkle.